Welcome back everybody, this is always back with another video on the channel. This is going to be the ninth part of our Ionic workshop tutorial series in which we're creating this expense tracker application. Before we start the video, just going to show you quickly what we have achieved so far. So here's an expense tracker application. Click on this plus button. You can type an amount description, select the type of an expense, click on add, and that expense will be added into local storage of a phone. And you will see that here. You can filter your expenses by date and also by category. Now, so far we have created this application we have set up our uh, local storage a data service and action service we've done a lot of work in last eight videos and this is going to be the ninth part of it also just to mention this application is open source here is the repository you can clone the repository and follow along with me or if you want to contribute and improve this application once we finish the series you're more than welcome to do that as well things i would like to share with you before we start the video the first thing is if you have any services required for development whether it's a web development a mobile application development a backend python uh, if you are looking for somebody to do that for you you can shoot me an email on this email and we can work together. And also, uh, last thing I would like to share that if you think this tutorial series has helped you and you learned a lot, uh, then you can help me by donating. There's a PayPal link in the description of this video. So let's get started with the code. The first task that we're going to do in this video would be fixing up this date picker. So I'm going to click on this date picker. I'm going to go and select six or seven done. Now it filters out the data and it changes the date as well. As we can see here, if I click on a date again, I cannot go back to the current date because we have this dashboard HTML and we have set that max to selected date. Once we change our date to, you know, let's just say pick two, pick three, maybe. Okay. Now, once we pick three, click on done and go back to date. And now we can select two as a max. So that is the problem because of the selected date. So the new date gets stored into selected date and that's what we are setting max for. So let's go to the Trello and I'm going to create a new task for me and say fix date picker for current date. Let's move this to in progress and let's go and work on this. Now to fix this, first of all, I'm going to go to dashboard page and I'm going to create another property here. I'm going to name it today date and that would be date object. And in the constructor function, I'm going to just say today date equal to this dot date time service dot get current date. Okay. Let's save the file. And now I'm going to click on this date picker. Go back to a date, like say five, click on five, go back to date picker and still it's not there. The reason for that is we haven't actually set that into a dashboard page. So selected date would become a today, today date. And let's try it out. So I'm going to change the date and I can see I can select nine. Okay. So here we have fixed this problem. Update Trello board. I'm going to go and move this to developed. Go back. And now next task we're going to work on is this category button. So this category button should be able to filter out the data. So if I click on today, I get that expense back and it has a type of grocery. Okay. I want to be able to click on this category button and then select the type and then the data will up be updated depending on the type we select. Now for that, here is a category uh, button. I'm going to first of all add some types. So if we go to expense component, here you see we have a static types here. I would like to convert these static types into an object. So for that, we're going to go to constant.ts file and I'm going to here export something like I'm going to just copy and paste so you don't have to see me typing. All right, so we got this expense types here. 
Now, next thing we need to go to add expense component. And here we are going to create a variable which basically have expense types. So just after this expense form, we're gonna say expense types and we can set that type to any for now. And within the constructor function, I'm going to say this dot expense type equal to expense types, which are coming from uh, this bit, uh, this constant dot here's file. Now that's all good. And now we're gonna go to HTML file and I'm gonna get rid of pretty much all the types here. All right, and then once we've uh, removed all the types, I'm going to use ng4. So let's just get rid of this uh, games here for now. And here we are going to use ng4. So I'm gonna type ng4, so let type of expense types and that we're gonna use a key value pair flag. Then we can use here type dot, and I can select a value here. Now if I save this bit, I'm gonna go to add expense, click on this select, and we can see we got these types coming up here. So that's good. Now for the value, I'm going to change uh, let's just do something like value and we can say the value would be type dot value. Okay, that's good now and we fix this. Now we're gonna make sure that we create this, uh, you know, ion select on this category button as well. So for that, I'm going to copy this ion item we're gonna go to the dashboard HTML page and here we have a category. I'm going to paste that ion item here. And now it's gonna cause an error because there's no expense types there. So we're gonna go to the dashboard page and I'm going to create expense types here, set that to any. And in the constructor function, I'm gonna set this dot expense types equal to expense types. Once we have that variable, the arrow should go away. I can click on this bit and then it will show me the types there. Now, what we need to do is once we select this type, we need to call an event. Let's go to the Ionic documentation and let's see what we can find out for Ion Select. So I'm gonna go to components and I would like to go and click on select. And now here we are going to look for an event handler, the way we can access the event. And I'm gonna go here, uh, let's go down. Here we got this interfaces, that's good. And I'm going to look for an event. This should be here. So here we got this ion change. So the way we did that with, uh, with the, this add expense, component we're going to use a similar kind of approach but with ion change event so first of all let's get rid of this form control type and then i'm going to get rid of these identification as well let's save the file i'm going to use ion change event on ion select and we can call a function here so I'm going to say change selected and I'm going to pass in changed as a string. Now this is going to throw an error because this hasn't been created yet. So we are going to go here and I'm going to say change selected and that would take a val in string. It doesn't return anything and we are going to just log that for now. Okay, and we're going to say log val so let's give it a shot we go back to browser i'm going to click on this bit click on rent and now we should see changed if i click on this medical we should see changed now i'm going to go back and i'm going to in the dashboard page 
let's create a variable here so a template variable so i'm going to say selected type and here i would like to use that selected type dot value okay let's give it a shot i'm going to click on this select and i'm going to click on this services and there you go we get the services there if i change this to medical we get medical there so we're getting a type there now once we're getting a type i can you know do a bit of hack here to filter out the expenses this is not an ideal way to do it but let's give it a shot and see if we are able to achieve that so i'm going to use a cons and i'm going to say expense list or we say temp list equal to let's just say empty array and i'm going to use this dot expenses dot for each and we're going to expect an expense which would be an expense interface type and then here if i say if expense dot type equal to equal to val then we are going to use temp list dot push expense okay now after this loop we can simply say this dot expenses equal to temp list let's give it a shot here i've got a couple of expenses created but not in the browser so we're going to create a couple of expenses so we're going to say 35 let's select the type as games let me go and create another one so whatever the value and next one would be pets And let's select medical okay now we got three expenses with different types i'm going to click here first of all let's select game and there you go we are filtering out only the game if i click it again and i'm going to click on services nothing's there if i click on medical nothing's there now the problem is that because we actually updated our expenses and our expenses were set to just one expense which was a type of a game and next time when we filter out it didn't find anything in the medical so if i refresh the page if i go to select a medical it should have one medical now there is a problem with this approach we don't want to you know reset our expenses and we don't have a way to actually set the expenses in the dashboard page depending on a different variable so for that we actually not going to use any kind of function this was just the hack way that i wanted to show you let's get rid of that function to get rid of this ion change here also because we use the interface as popover we don't need OK text and cancel text as well. Also, I'm going to get rid of the value there. I'm going to use a pipe to filter our data. I've created a category.pipe.ts file and spec file as well. I paused the video because I didn't want you guys to see me typing a lot and that can be a waste of time for you guys. So I'm just going to double click on this file and here we got this category pipe name set to category now what it does it takes the value in expense interface array and then the type and we check but if the type is all or type is undefined then we return the value otherwise we use a filter on array and we check if the val the type equal to this type now this is a plain angular pipe and I expect you to know this how to use it. So here if you take a look at this bit in our card, I've just used that category pipe and we passed in selected value dot value, which is coming in from this selected value. It's like a template variable there. Okay, now once we pass that in, we also need to add a pipe to a dashboard module. So here we're using category pipe in our module so we can use that i'm going to close some files there and now we're going to go and test our application so i'm going to go to application and here we got the pretty much three types of expenses a games pets and a medical i'm going to click on here and i can click on pet 
and now you can see it's filtering out the pets type of data and go to games now we get the games if i go to medical i get the medical if i select anything like general it doesn't have anything i'm going to click on add and let's add something and we're going to set that type to general i'm not sure where is the type there there you go add and now we get to see a general i'm going to change this to all we get all the data back. I'm going to go back to general category. And we are filtering out now. As you can see, this pipe is working. It filters out of the data on the fly, which makes it very, very easy. So the way I'm using it is just adding a pipe and passing that as a parameter. And yeah, we got that. Now I just figured out one problem here. As you can see, I want to actually open up this selector on a category, not on this page. So what I can do here is go here and I'm actually going to get rid of this and I'm going to use this hidden. I'm actually going to hide this. Now we cannot click on this because that's hidden. So what I'm going to do now on a category button, we're going to use a click event and i'm going to use this selected value dot open function on that okay let's go back to the code and now if i click on a category it will open up this page now this is like the angular uh, sorry it's android like android type of thing now here we're getting this value 0 19 13 we're gonna have to figure out why these values are coming in as well because that's not what we want so you know that's not what we want, so we're gonna fix that. I'm gonna go and check out the iPhone version. Click on category, and now we can select that, okay? Now this is like a popover. If I take a look at this category here, this is like a popover with okay and cancel text. I'll go back and I'll see, uh, where's a hidden one? This is here, so that's a popover interface. So if I select alert interface here, it's compiling let's go and take a look at our application click here and now we get it's it's kind of alert i think more mobile version mobile emulator is not updating automatically but let's go to the documentation and i'm going to select one of those so that's alert api action sheet api and then the popover api so if i just copy this action sheet let's go back to the code and I'm going to paste that here. Once our code is compiled properly, click here, and now we get to see an action sheet now. And that's good. So you click on category, we get to see action sheet. But the problem with this is that we're not able to, you know, scroll down. So that's not ideal. We want to use uh, pop over. Let's save it. And let's see if our application gets updated. Click on this. And now again, this popover is coming this way. I don't want to do this. But for now, we just not worry about it anymore. Just going to click on rent, click OK. And it's just filtering out. That's what was the goal. And also with the category button, then I can click on it and it can open up that. Now I'm going to go back to documentation and I'm going to find a method, which is this open method. And open method select overlay either is an alert action sheet or popover depending on the interface properly on so it can actually take some kind of event as well but we don't want to do that so let's just not worry about it anymore okay our application is looking good guys we can filter out a data now depending on the category so that's good in the next video we are going to work on this filter button which will help us to filter by price or by amount. Then we will have a then we will work on if we want to delete any particular expense from our uh, you know from the DB. So yep, yeah, let's uh, do that in the next part.